much, Jean. And uh, let's start with a round of applause for Jean and for Fran Polner. I want to welcome you all to District 20 to the heart of Silver Spring and to Como Park, where all progressive change begins in the state of Maryland. Uh, um, and let that be a challenge to those of you who have joined us from other places. Um, uh, we're, we're delighted that uh, you've come to assemble here to address uh, such an urgently important issue as the state of the budget nationally, the state of the budget in the state, the state of the budget locally, and how all of it relates to the military budget and the budget for, uh, for foreign wars. And uh, we gather tonight in uh, a nonpartisan or a bipartisan or a multipartisan fashion, so I thought I would uh, just kick us off by citing our last great Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, who uh, spoke of government of the people, by the people, and for the people, uh, which is the proposition that's being tested tonight. It's the same proposition that was being tested, of course, by Lincoln, also by President Eisenhower, who 50 years ago warned us of the growth of a permanent military industrial complex and permanent war uh, as a threat to democracy and to the liberty of the people. And uh, it's perhaps a sign of how far we've come or how far we've sunk that no one in national political life, Republican, Democrat, or other, cites to that great speech by President Eisenhower, who was a judge, who was a general, but we will cite to Eisenhower tonight. Um, the, I guess the other thing I want to say to frame this is when we circulated the letter in Annapolis to state senators and state delegates uh, in the last legislative session, uh, which urged our delegation in Washington to do whatever they can to transfer federal resources from the military industrial complex and from war to the desperate needs of the people across the country. Uh, it was at the time that the Arab Spring broke out. And I remember one day I was coming in to work in Annapolis and I was meeting some people about the letter that Delegate Hickson and I um, put together, and I was listening to a report on National Public Radio about how the governments of both Egypt and Tunisia were madly scrambling to cancel orders for billions of dollars worth of military equipment from U.S. arms manufacturers because they wanted to spend that money to try to placate the people and spend it on education and health and public welfare. And they realized that all of the arms that they'd been buying uh, from our big corporations wouldn't do anything to stabilize their regimes in the face of the Arab Spring, the demand for democracy and for social change in those countries, which is uh, one of the, the, the greatest things to happen in our lifetimes, that that part of the world is waking up. But if they're having an Arab Spring against militarism and injustice and inequality, can we have an American Spring here against militarism and injustice? to demand a reversal of social priorities because we simply cannot afford the military-industrial complex any longer. Are you with me on that? We cannot afford 